This gray whale is located at the Vancouver Island University Deep Bay Marine Center. We are here for the September episode of Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We will be right back with all sorts of interesting information. Stay right where you are. Welcome to Where You Live, I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are in Deep Bay at the Vancouver Island University Marine Center. Joining me is Carl Butterworth. Now, Carl, what is this place? Now, the Deep Bay Marine Field Station is part of Vancouver Island University, and our mission here is kind of twofold. Number one is research, so we do applied research for the shellfish aquaculture industry, oh. and we also do education for the public. So we do education okay. on general marine sciences themes, whether it's pollution in the environment, um, or just what the marine life is like in this area. What's special about Bain Sound and about the Salish Sea in general? Okay. What's your favorite aspect? Well, I, I know, it's kind of it's hard to say. Both are fascinating, right? The research that we're doing is neat because it's very applied. It's stuff that businesses will be able to use now as opposed oh, to longitudinal okay. research right. where it, it'll be interesting in the future. But it, it'll take a little while to get there. I like that we're in a, a bit of an economic development role right now, helping to make hatcheries a bit more of a, a viable business in BC uh, and helping to push the shellfish aquaculture industry forward a little bit. Cool. But the public education side is also really fun too. It's wonderful to see the engagement that children have when they come in here and adults mm -hmm. who get to learn a little bit more about what's special about Vancouver Island, what's special about the marine environment here and what are things that they can do that will help out. Okay. Now if there's the both sides of it, the economic development as well as the research side, do you include Vancouver Island University students in any of the aspects? We do, yeah. Okay. We, um, we have summer students throughout the summer. So if um, visitors come out to the station, we're open seven days a week. It'll be our summer students who are taking oh, okay. them through a lot of our public education activities and explaining okay. our research activities. But we also, throughout the year, have our fisheries and aquaculture students, some of our biology students, coming out here doing practicum placements, internship placements, okay. using, learning hands-on job-ready skills but also uh, doing senior projects here. So we're open okay. for our own students to come out and do a senior inquiry-based project. Oh, great. Yeah. Now, once upon a time, when the center first opened, didn't you have like food facilities and wedding receptions and... We did have a wide variety of activities, yeah. Okay. We've, um, we've decided to really focus on two things, on research and education, okay. and really work on doing a very, very good job at that, um, okay. rather than spreading ourselves a little too thin and getting a right. little stretched. Well, and so it's basically an evolution of the center. How many mm. years has the center been here now? We're in our sixth year now. Sixth year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, um, would you say education for the general public, it's great to see them in. What about classrooms? Like, can teachers bring their students out here for mm. a day of learning? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, we do quite a lot of field trips for sort of the K to 12 range, more for sort of kindergarten through to about grade 8, grade 9. Okay. We're also starting to do more, um, along with the new K to 12 curriculum, more inquiry based projects for senior science students. Oh. So, what we've done um, just this last year with classes is have them come into the station, do a, a bit of a pre learning module around algae or around plankton, whatever it happens to be. Okay. Come into the station, set up an experiment along with our public education coordinator. So okay. that um, they're exploring several lines of inquiry about like what, what might make algae grow or what would be the effect of a change in salinity or a change okay. in dissolved oxygen level. Okay. Set up those experiments, then they go away. We run the experiments here for them. They come back a couple weeks later and look in and see what's happened to their experiment. Has it gone really well? Has it gone really bad? And start to figure out why that might have happened using the knowledge that they've gained while they've been doing this whole thing. So that would be available to like any grade 9 through 12 or grade 11 and 12 student? Yeah, sort of 7 to okay. uh, 11 sort of seven range. Okay. And we're hoping to really, with, with the senior science students, grade 11 and 12s, really be able to facilitate a few projects for them okay. from our local school districts to be able to get them in here and do something a bit more advanced if marine biology is going to okay. be their area. So that would include like the Nanaimo School District, Port Alberni, Campbell River, even Parksville, Qualicum, as well as Campbell River, like any yeah, of the school districts. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And also too with their distance learning branches as well. Because okay. they have, uh, each of yes, those school of districts has a distance learning branch which does some really fascinating stuff as well. Yes. And yeah. Powell River has a district, distant, distant learning program as well. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So we're just, Great. we're slowly starting to expand our offerings in that area, but we okay. really want to get more engagement from the high school level with Vancouver Island University, but also with right. marine sciences in general, and the shellfish aquaculture industry, because it's a fascinating industry to work in. It is, and we're going to get to that in the next part of the interview, I think. Um, okay, you're watching Where You Live. Uh, my name is Mary Ruth Harris. This is Carl Butterworth. We will be right back from here in Deep Bay.
Welcome back. Where you live is here in Deep Bay. These are the tanks that are available for the general public to come and actually pick up sea creatures. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but Carl Butterworth is the general manager here at the uh, Deep Bay Marine Center for the Vancouver Island University, and he's going to help me navigate some of this. So when the general public comes in, you've got three tanks here, and you've got different species in each tank. So mm. in this tank, what do you have? This tank is more shellfish. So in okay. here we have swimming scallops, we have Pacific oysters, uh, we have a moon snail who's hiding here somewhere, we have some sand dollars, and these are all the things that you would find. If you went down to the beach in, in Bain Sound or in the Salish Sea in general, these are the kind of things you're going to find out there. So we're really helping the public just to understand a bit more about what's around them in their natural now, environment. Now, what's this? That is a really large scallop. Wow. And there's a smaller scallop sitting on him right now. And that's a... Okay. Oh, look at that. He moved. Oh, yeah. there's the little crab hiding down there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to move my hand too much so it doesn't ripple the water. All right. Yeah. And now, these scallops can actually swim, which is really entertaining. They swim? Yes, they do. How do they swim? Uh, it looks like a set of false teeth going through the water. It's fascinating. <laughs> That's All the scientific right. description, anyway. <laughs> now, what is this fuzzy thing here? That one's an anemone. I remember Dory trying to pronounce that in Finding Nemo, and it, she could say it. It is a challenge it. for all of us. An anemone? Anemone. Anemone. Yes. All right, so that's an anemone. Yeah. And what's this little guy? And that one's a sea urchin. Can you? Yeah. Let's put him here in my... Oh! Yeah. So that's a green sea urchin. Actually, surprisingly fast. Each one of those little spines on the underside can move it along. Oh, and they have yeah. a mouth underneath, so they eat primarily algae. So they'll work their way along the edge of the tank, and that's what helps to keep the algae down He's, in our tanks. It's, you can tell how sharp it is. Like yes. I'm not, it's very, very sharp. Yeah, safe to handle as long as you're gentle, but not something you want to step on if you're out uh, exploring right. the ocean. Now, how do I put them back? Oh, just pick them up and just put them back down oh, okay. where we found them. All right. Yeah. And now, okay, so that's another anemone. Yep. Okay. And I saw a little crab. He's hiding under that great big huge scallop. Yep, there's a couple little crabs in here that have made their way in. Some kelp crabs and some general shore crabs. And what's and this thing stuck to the side of the wall? That is a sea cucumber. Yeah. And that one is wow. right now feeding on some of the algae that's on the side of the tank. Okay. Is he, does it hurt? Nope. No. Now is this a plant or it's actually a thing? It's actually an animal, yeah. It's actually an animal. Mm -hmm. And this is the fun okay. part about coming to the Deep Bay Marine Field Station is the chance to actually touch these things and figure out what they're like. And everything in here it's is fairly not, hardy. It's not slimy. No, it's actually got it kind of a, slimy. not quite a sticky, but a, a, there's a it's texture to like, it. It's almost um, like silly putty. It almost mm -hmm. has that grippy. Yeah, and it's very gelatinous. Oh, look at him. He's sleeping. He's sneaking back. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so just put him back in? Yep, just put him down. He'll find his way back to where he was. I don't want to hurt him. There you go, buddy. Nice. Yeah. All right. Oh, look, he just dropped to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is amazing. This is really quite fun. It's, I'm not as scared now as I thought I was yeah. going to be. And we, the feedback we get from the public who come to the station is that this is one of the highlights, being able to touch and interact with things. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. And so, um, so by, by handling the animals that like it doesn't hurt them no because they're very hardy or yeah and, they're very hardy and, and the water is very cold just yeah. so you know my and all of our water is coming up continuously from the ocean so we're constantly pumping fresh salt water up from the ocean oh. through our research labs through all of our aquariums and touch tanks so oh, everybody okay. in here is getting the same water quality that their friends in the ocean are getting right now oh, okay this is really quite fascinating. Can we look at that tank there? Because yeah. it's different. Absolutely. So which animals are in this one? This is our predator tank. Predators. So this is starfish. So this is where I don't want to put my hand. <laughs> yeah, just be careful. No, these are, they're all quite safe. This okay. is primarily starfish, but also some sea urchins. Oh, um, OK. Yeah. Now what, here's a starfish here. Yep. So can, how do I pick them up? Just gently cup underneath them and pick them up. Yeah, so that's a leather star. And once again, all these are ones that you would find at the beach or down at a rocky shoreline along Vancouver Island, but also Bain Sound in the Salish Sea. And what is this one called? It's a leather star. A leather star. And why is it called leather star? You know, I don't know, actually. Oh, okay. Because of the texture on his back, I think. 
Yeah. It looks leather. It doesn't feel leather. Again, it's very, this one is a bit slipperier is it? than the sea cucumber. It's quite, yeah. it has a nice slip to it. Not slimy, just slippery. Mm. Amazing. Okay, well, I'm going to put you back in there, guy. Just hang tough. There you go. <gasps> this water is so cold. Okay. And it's warm right now. It goes down to around 8 or 9 degrees in the winter. Wow. Yep. And that's good for them because that's yep. what they're used to. Yep. Okay. Well, this is just absolutely fascinating. So um, you're watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me is Carl Butterworth. We are here in Deep Bay at the Vancouver Island University Marine Center. And they do both research here as well as education for the general public and classes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come right back after this short break. This is just amazing. I love this green and black one there. He's pretty mm -hmm. cool. And that burgundy one, he's really pretty. Yeah, these ones can live for up to 200 years. What? Yeah. 200 years? The red sea urchins, yeah. Unbelievable. 200 years. Mm -hmm. Holy. Okay. Welcome back. You're watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are here in Deep Bay at the Vancouver Island University Marine Center. Joining me is Sarah LaDuke, who is an algologist. What is that? I have no idea. What is an algologist, Sarah? An algologist is someone who grows algae. So we grow oh. algae for the Pacific oysters that we run through the hatchery. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, what you, this looks like a mad scientist <laughs> research lab. So yeah. what are some of the things that you guys do here? Um, we're running a research hatchery. So okay. in that we have to grow algae um, to feed the oysters, but we do grow all of our, or we make all of our own silicates, thios, nutrients for the algae to grow. So it's their food. Oh, okay. So you guys are actually growing the food for the sea animals that you're also growing? Yeah, for the Pacific oyster larvae and sea okay. and broodstock. Okay, and what's the difference between broodstock and like, what are... So broodstock are the parents. They're the, the adults that we condition up and then we spawn them and then we raise their babies. Oh, and then what do you do with them? So it's all for a broodstock enhancement program. Okay. So we'll hold back batches of the oysters that we raise um, to be looked at by a geneticist later down the road okay. to build a ultimate brood stock for Bain Sound. Okay. So is this only for the Bain Sound area, for the agriculture companies that are based here, or is it for more areas than just Bain Sound? Um, well, the majority of the shellfish aquaculture in BC is in Bain Sound. Okay. It's all over our coast as well. Okay. Um, but a, a large tonnage comes out of Bain Sound every year. Okay. So the idea is to build a broodstock that is hardy in Bain Sound. Okay. So we have naturally low pH water in Bain Sound. So okay. that's one of the things. And then we'll look at disease resistance. Um, yeah. And what about the changes in like water temperature and changes in the acidic level in the ocean? Like, how do you account for those things when you're building these broodstocks? Well, we can control the pH of our water. Um, we're not doing it right now. Uh, and there's a few reasons for it. Okay. Um, the larvae that we raise that survive through the low pH water, Okay. perhaps they're gonna be able to better handle it in the future. Okay. Um, but yeah, there is, there'll be research going into the pH of the ocean, the dissolved okay. CO2, okay. all of that kind of stuff. Now, um, we now you also grow algae like do you grow it in petri dishes uh no we grow it in flasks so behind us there is our stock cultures okay oh yeah okay yeah All so right. the stock cultures come from ncma in the u.s okay and then we grow we gradually bring them up in size so we go from a 250 ml flask to a 500 to a four liter to carboys and into the bags and we can okay. go look at that after okay awesome well, it all sounds really interesting. Like, does your 
does your day-to-day -day work change? Like, is there a big variety to what you do here? Yeah, um, yeah, life definitely is all <laughs> over the place here. So we've done uh, some huge facility upgrades with our, okay. our research hatchery. We've rebuilt our algal lab, built a seed nursery. Um, so we can be working on algae, we can be working with larval stuff setting oysters, working with the broodstock, working with the bottle up weller, or working with our boats. Okay, so other than oysters, do you, like, are there any other, like, sea cucumbers or scallops, or like, do you just work with oysters, or do you work with all of them? Right now we're just working with Pacific oysters. Of course, okay. we have our aquariums that um, showcase a variety of species yes. from within Bain Sound, um, but for the research hatchery side of things, it's just uh, Pacific oysters. Okay, great. Okay, well this is fascinating. I see a whole lot of equipment here that I wouldn't know what any of it is. It looks like some small refrigerators and um, how many, like, how many years of training did you go through to do what you do? I had two years, so I'm a graduate of the Bank of Ireland University Fisheries and Aquaculture Diploma Program. Okay. Um, and then we do take students from there Tuesdays and Thursdays so that they can work in our research hatchery. Oh, okay. Yeah, you learn a lot on the go. Oh, okay, awesome. All right. And what's your favorite part of the job? The variety. The variety. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't get boring. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, Sarah, thanks so much. No problem. Um, you're watching Where You Live. We will be right back. Welcome back to Where You Live. We are in the Research Center of Growing Algae here at the Marine Center in Deep Bay with Sarah LeDuc. Now, Sarah, what size are those flasks that he's looking at right now? Those are the 500 uh, ml daughter flasks. Okay. So those go from the 500 to the 4 liters and into the carboys. Oh, okay. So there's the bigger size, there's the next size. And then what's here behind you? What is that? This is our continuous culture algal bag system. So these are 350 liter bags and we put nutrient rich salt water in the top and then we harvest the algae out the bottom. So we grow algae 24 hours a day and harvest 24 hours a day and feed 24 hours a day. Oh, that is really cool. But you know, I would love to shoot like a science fiction horror. <laughs> this would be a great room for that. Yeah. The colors are so vibrant. They are, and most people think we're making beer. <laughs> <laughs> green beer for, yeah. okay. Yeah, St. So, Patrick's. So what kind of algae is the green algae? This is Tetris Elmus. So that's a good question that different, the different uh, colors of bags are different species or different densities. Okay. So the green is? Tetrasalmus. Okay, and then the light brown. This is an isochrysis species. It's kind of like a pale ale. Yeah. And, and then, then the Rickard's red is? That's going to be an isochrysis as well. Okay. And then down on the end, there's some pavlova that's a slightly yellow or brown. Okay. So the different species, different nutrient profiles. Amazing. Yeah. And so depending on the species that you're feeding will depend on which one you take or which one you yeah. feed with well, which. We like to give them a variety, so we kind of call okay. it liquid salad. Oh, okay. So we mix all of the species or multiple species together to feed the larvae. Oh, okay. And how does that help them when they get out there in the big blue yonder? Uh, this is just to grow them. So this okay. is their food for now. Okay. And then they'll have to fend for themselves and eat what's available to them. In the but, zone. but getting exposed to this while they're growing, it helps them to adjust to the ocean. Just to grow. Just to grow, okay. Just to grow. All right, cool. Well, this is all very fascinating. Okay, uh, you're watching Where You Live, Sarah. Thank you so very much. No um, we will be right back. Stay right where you are.
Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are here in the Sea Lab at the Deep Bay Marine Center for Vancouver Island University. This is fascinating. This is where they grow oysters. And you're like, what? So Carl's going to explain what they do here. Carl? Yeah, so this is part of a research project we're doing at the moment with the support of Western Economic Diversification and the Ministry of Agriculture to look at different hatchery technologies that will help hatcheries to be a bit more cost effective or to do business a bit differently. Stuff to just really help the industry out so we can start getting a bit more seed supply within British Columbia to help out the oyster farmers. Okay. Uh, and this apparatus that we have right here is part of that demonstration right now. So what is that apparatus? This is a bottle upweller system. So this is one that was developed in Britain and in Australia, uh, and that's had great success there. And what it's doing right now is there's millions of oyster seed in each of those different containers, and it's bubbling fresh salt water up through those, salt water that's got algae in it. Okay. So those little oysters continuously have algae-rich salt water going past them, oh, okay. and that's helping them to grow. But at the same time, it's tumbling them while they grow. So instead of oysters getting all flat like you might see on the beach or right. on the rocks, these this is keeping individual oysters, yeah, so they're tumbling, so they go a bit rounder. So oh, for the industry, okay. it's more, um, more oyster meat inside a smaller shell, oh. but also a nicer oyster too when you get it to the restaurant and you're shucking it open right there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now, I myself, I'm not an oyster eater, but my mm. husband loves them, yeah. and that's very interesting because normally we see them in the great big oval flatter shells and they crack them open. and. Yeah. So now you're saying they're going to be rounder shells and more meat inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you're looking at two to three years before an oyster is sort of ready to go to market in that sense. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Now, um, how many in each one of those canisters? Uh, each one of those could up to one or two million in each one of those. Really? So we can, yeah. Now, how long does it take them to grow from that size to the next size before they have to come out of that? Generally, that's about the size where they go out onto the farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So at this point, okay. when they get to this size, then we start to bring the temperature down to the conditions that they'll be experiencing in the ocean for the ones that are going to go out into the ocean. Okay. Um, and sort of bring their feed level to something where they're ready to transition out to a farm site. Okay. Yeah. And then how do you actually get them to the farm site? Uh, well, oysters are very resistant to going from water to air because they're a subtitle spe or an intertidal species, so they're always okay. going in and out with the tide. So we take them out of the water, they get wrapped up into a little bag, the farmer comes and gets them and takes them right away to their site. So we just keep them cool for transport and off they go. Really? Yeah. So they don't need to be constantly in the water? No, they're quite good being out of the water for periods of time. That is so slick. I had no idea that that was, you no, know, is that the same for all types of seabed animals like scallops and sea cucumbers and mussels not, or is not it for just all of them. for oysters? Uh, mainly for oysters. Mainly um, for oysters. Yeah, okay. Because they're the ones who are sort of, because they're, they'll be stuck on rocks in nature so as the tide okay. goes out they'll be out for a while so they're used to coping without, ox, or without water for a while. Wow. Okay. Now what's your favorite part about working here? Uh, like Sarah, the variety. The variety, uh, okay. This, this is a fascinating place to work. The research activities that we're doing are quite novel, right? So this, this equipment's been used in other places around the world, but we're really seeing how well it'll work in BC okay. if it'll solve some of the issues that industry's having. So it's nice to know that you're doing work that's gonna be immediately applicable to somebody. Okay. But the, uh, the awesome. work with the public is fascinating, right? Because yeah. everybody who comes through here is here to see something. Right. And they're happy to be here, they're, they're asking questions. Right. You just can't help but get caught up in their enthusiasm. And you guys are at the leading edge of this research and this uh, development. Part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's groups around. Oyster farming is quite a large industry around the world, so okay. there's quite a lot of groups doing this sort of work around the world, and we're happy to do our part to go along with that. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so very much. This has been absolutely unbelievable. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming. This has been fun. <laughs> You've been watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are at the Deep Bay Marine Center here, which belongs to the Vancouver Island University, and as Carl has explained through the show, it's both a research center as well as public education for not only the general public to walk in, but also classrooms to come and learn here. And it's hands-on, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be right back. Stay right where you are. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me now is Jensen Kelty, and she has volunteered here at the Deep Bay Marine Center since she was 11 years old. How old are you now? I'm 17. And so you're just going into grade 12 then? Yeah, this September. Wow. 
So why do you keep coming back? What is it about working with these sea creatures that you love so much? I'm really passionate about marine biology. I really like learning about the ocean and what lives in it. And I'm also really concerned about conserving the oceans for future generations. There's a lot of environmental effects at play right now and mm -hmm. human effects that are really taking a toll on the oceans. Okay. Now, where are you hoping to study after you're done grade 12 at Banyang? Um, I'm hoping to apply to Dalhousie University in Halifax. They have okay. a really incredible marine biology program. But I'm also going to apply to VIU and to UVic and okay. other local universities. Now, um, so you're here this year as a summer student? Yes. And what's your favorite thing about working? Like it's all hands-on and yeah. you get really dirty and kind of smelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is it that you like about that? Um, I just like that I'm actually doing something. Like the work okay. I'm doing is actually producing results and I'm actually like creating actions. Like I'm not just sitting upstairs at a desk. I'm actually doing something. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much. And yeah. what would you say to any of the youngsters that might be watching this show that are kind of interested in the ocean? Would you um, say just come and visit and see what they have here? Yeah, I would definitely visit the station if you're interested in the ocean. And I would volunteer if you have the time. There's the field station here. There's lots of places you can volunteer at and get experience and learn more. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You're watching Where You Live. We'll be right back. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. You've been watching Where You Live. We have been here in Deep Bay at the Marine Center run by the Vancouver Island University. Carl, thank you so much. This has been absolutely fantastic. Well, my pleasure. It's been fun having you here. Now, if you would like to come and visit, they are open seven days a week in the summer up until Labor Day weekend from 10 until 4. And then after that, it's Monday to Friday from 10 to 4. If you are a teacher and you would like to come through with your class, please give them a call. The number is on the screen. And if you are a member of the general public and you want to come with your family and friends, please visit their website. There is copious amounts of information there for you. And please come and visit because it is truly fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.